We're going to be tying a pheasant tail nymph. This is a fly that was originally designed by Frank Sawyer in the 1950s, and he designed it to mimic the blue wing olive nymphs that uh, were common on the chalk streams he fished in England. Uh, here in the U.S., we tie it a little bit differently than Frank Sawyer did, uh, but it remains a really fantastic uh, mayfly nymph imitation. Uh, not just for blooming olives, but for mayflies in general. So we're going to be tying in a size 14. This is a uh, nymph hook Allen S402. And we're going to be using uh, black uni thread 60. And I'll tie, it in, tie the thread in about two eye widths behind the eye. A couple of turns just to capture the thread. And cut away the waste. And the first thing we're going to be tying in is a piece of copper wire. And we're going to be using the ultra wire small size copper. Uh, I also use medium when I tie this fly sometimes just to give it a little bit extra weight but the small is really better proportion to this hook size. So we'll do one or two wraps just to capture the wire and then we're going to pull it back to minimize the waste and we're going to wrap backwards keeping that wire on my side of the hook as much as possible just to keep things tidy and we're going to go to a point that's just opposite where the barb was because of course we smashed down the barb because uh, we're nice fly fishermen. The next thing we're going to tie in is some pheasant tail fibers. So this is a pheasant tail feather. Uh, I like to go down to the base here where the you got nice long robust fibers. Pull them out 90 degrees and that's going to line them up for you and then just snip them away. And the number, I never count, but I'm guessing it's probably between six and eight fibers. Uh, you go by looks more than number when it comes to things like this. So you can see the tips are nicely aligned. We're going to measure the tail length against the hook, and we want it to be about half the shank length. And we'll transfer that into our other hand, and we're going to use a pinch loop on the top just to pull those fibers down straight on top of the hook another just to secure it pull the fibers back and wrap forward and now we're going to use the thread to form a body so touching turns all the way up make sure you cover any exposed tag from that uh, wire because if you don't you'll catch your thread on it and you'll be very unhappy when it breaks now we're going to wind all the way back again and this is just building an underbody to help define the uh, the fly a bit better. And now we'll come up again. And once we get to the front we're going to come back to the halfway point. And then come forward. And that's just giving you a little bit of taper. Alright, we'll let the thread hang there and we're going to wrap the pheasant tail. And we want to try to keep this flat and touching turns. And the truth is, it's not that important. I'm going to use my finger to catch it on the other side of the hook so I don't lose the fibers as I come around. Sawyer actually uh, twisted the fibers around the wire and that made a more durable fly. Slightly different effect, but eh, it doesn't matter that much. You can see this is creating some nice segmentation. Once we get up to the front, we'll just drop a turn or two of thread over the top to hold that in place. And do one or two turns in front. And now we're going to run that wire up through the, through the body. Uh, I like to do this counter-wrapped to the uh, direction of the fibers that we just wrapped in order to just help uh, increase the durability a bit. So I'm going to bring it back under the tail and that's going to help the tail pop up a bit which is nice and now we'll just wrap evenly spaced three to four turns and you can see what that's doing is it's both protecting the, uh, the fibers from the pheasant tail which can be quite fragile but it's also providing a bit of weight to the fly and a bit of flash. So drop one or two turns over and 
we can just twirl that off usually. There we go. Okay. We'll wrap up a few just to make sure that we're covering that <clears throat> that wire tag. And now we're going to come back a little bit on the pheasant tail fibers on the top. And you can see they've now been kind of captured backwards. And the next thing we're going to tie in is some peacock curl. And good quality peacock curl is really important. Um, I get mine from Fly Fisher's Paradise in Central PA. Best, best turtle that I have ever found. And uh, it does make a difference. So look for some good quality peacock curl. I'm just going to use three fibers, uh, which should be uh, three hurl, which should be more than enough. Uh, the tips are very, very fragile, so we're going to just cut those away. Um, there you go. Oops. Come on, cut those away. There. <laughs> And we will tie that in just one turn, just to capture, and then we'll pull back. Get those tips back behind the eye, and then we'll wrap forward. Now, we're going to wrap backward as well. And we're going to come right back to the, to the tie-in point. Let the thread hang there. And then as we wrap the hurl, we're actually going to let the curl move the thread forward. What this does is it helps line up the wraps. It helps keep them nice and tight together. And that looks pretty good. So we're going to cross the thread, tie it off, cross it again, and then do a couple wraps in front and trim away the waist. And there, that is finished. Now, we want to take the pheasant tail fibers that are still hanging up top here I'm going to get those spread out as flat as possible and bring them over the top of the hurl. And that's going to form a wing case. We'll again use a captured loop or a pinch loop just to pull that down on top nice and tight. Let's take a look at that make sure everything is lining up nicely. And once we're happy with that, <clears throat> the only thing left to do is to make some legs. For legs, we're going to take two of the fibers on either side. So I've just selected two. We'll pull those back and we'll do a wrap to hold them in place. And then we'll do the same thing on the, the near side of the hook. It's sometimes a little tricky to find just two. That's okay. I don't think fish can count. So if you get three, it's not the end of the world. And of course you can always cut them off. And there we go. That that looks good. I'm going to pull those back and do a couple of turns now just to keep them back. And then we will clip off the remaining pheasant tail fibers right behind the eye. Do a few turns just to make a nice neat head. And then we will go straight into a three or four turn whip finish. Just depending on how I'm feeling. One. Yeah, we'll go with four. Make sure that's nice and tight. Clip away the waist. Well, not the waist. Clip away the tying thread. And we want to trim those, those legs now. And we're going to pull those up and cut them at about half the body length. There we go. That looks quite nice. Now I like to finish the fly with a little bit of varnish. I use spar varnish that's diluted and I'll, I'll do a video sometime on varnish and tying wax and all that good stuff. Uh, we just take a drop on the dubbing needle and just touch it to the front. Brush it back over the, the wing case a little bit just to toughen that up a bit. Make sure that the eye is open and the fly is done. Oh, it looks like I missed one of those legs when I was cutting them. That's okay, we'll just trim it off. There we go. So that is the pheasant tail nymph.
relatively simple fly to tie, nice slender profile, really does a great job of making uh, mayfly nymphs. Caught a lot of fish with this fly.